Sal San Francisco, California. You're thinking about making a move here, right? Is it a part of San Francisco itself? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you a walkthrough via Google Maps where Sal San Francisco is, which neighborhoods are expensive, affordable, walkable, convenient, which one is the most popular condo complex, and where you can find the best views in the city. At the end of this video, if you haven't already, do check out our other video about the pros and cons of living here in South City. Definitely check out that one. We share things you might not know about the industrial city. So a little history about South San Francisco. South San Francisco is an independent city, which is south of San Francisco. Oh, now we get it. It was called the industrial city back in the 1920s. The city had multiple industrial plants for manufacturing and processing, and it was known as the smokestack of the peninsula during that time. Nowadays, we consider it the biotech hub for the Bay Area because a lot of bioscience firms can be found in Oyster Point on the eastern side of the city. Now let's jump into which neighborhood is the most affordable in South San Francisco. That's gonna be Paradise Valley. This neighborhood is located on the most northeastern part of town next to Highway 101 and on the opposite side of Oyster Point. This neighborhood mostly consists of single-story track homes that were built in the 1940s, and this area tends to be more dense with smaller lots and older homes. Being less than a mile away from downtown on the east side, this is one of the most original residential neighborhoods that were built as a part of the city as it expanded in the 1930s and 40s. Currently, you can find homes in the area for less than a million dollars. Also notable is Francisco Terrace, Mayfair Village, and West Orange, east of El Camino. Other notable, more affordable neighborhoods in this pocket can be found on the opposite side of downtown towards the west. Still east of El Camino, Francisco Terrace, Mayfair Village, and a pocket of West Orange, homes here tend to be more affordable and are extremely convenient. Francisco Terrace is made up of what we call Cape Cod homes, which are two-story homes with a signature pitch roof. These homes in Francisco Terrace tend to be deceiving as they look small on the outside, but they're quite large in terms of square footage due to the second story inside. Homes in Mayfair Village are mostly single-story, three-bedroom, one-bath homes built in the 1950s, and most of the lots here are flat and some of the homes even have detached garages. Most of the time, some people might find that desirable because it's separate from the house. Here we are in Paradise Valley. It's all the way to the northeastern part of town. And this is a pocket of mostly single story homes. There are gonna be some two story homes and they're all track homes in this area. It's very convenient because it's right next to, as you can see on the east side, 101. There is a Costco business center. So there's two Costco's in the city. One is located all the way to the east side in this industrial part, which is what we call Oyster Point. And you'll be able to access this because this is gonna be the closest one to you. Now, there's also a famous coffee shop and restaurant that a lot of locals like to go to early in the morning or for a midday boost for coffee and some pastries at Cafe de Casa, which is located off of Airport Boulevard in the neighborhood. Now, as you go further south from Paradise Valley, this is gonna be a bit more dense. This is considered the downtown area off of Grand. But as you get there, you're gonna be able to pass by the La Hacienda Market. And then of course, you're also gonna pass by the Amora Restaurant for Mediterranean food. You'll also find a lot more restaurants and other places you can visit for retail downtown off of Grand and the close by streets. Okay, now we're going to visit Francisco Terrace, Mayfair Village, and West Orange on the east side of El Camino. I'm gonna zoom in. Here's El Camino right here where you'll find Walgreens, Dollar Tree, there's gonna be some restaurants, famous local sandwich shop, Little Luca right here as well on the corner. And this is Francisco Terrace right here where you'll find Ramona, Wilms, Portola Avenue, and Sonora Avenue. It's a pocket of Cape Cod homes, which we'll show you. And also to the north of it, you'll find Mayfair Village, which is mostly single story homes within this development. And it's right next to Orange Memorial Park, where there's a big dog park, trails, and of course the Orange Pool, which is a public pool that you'll be able to visit. Now, the other part, which is a West Orange, east of El Camino, this is right behind El Camino, which you link the ABC streets and the first, second, and third streets. This is where you're also gonna be finding Los Cerritos Elementary School and other restaurants, hotels, and uh, retail that you might visit. Now let's move on to the most expensive neighborhood in South San Francisco. That's going to be 
Terra Bay. Construction started in the 1990s, so the homes here are much newer than your typical resale home in South City. You can find two types of homes here, the attached style homes and the detached style homes. The attached homes range between 15 and 1900 square feet and mostly feature city lights views in the backyard. The detached style homes in the area can be as big as over 3000 square feet and are as desirable as they come in South San Francisco. The homes here have high ceilings and a more modern spacious living quarters, especially if that's what you're looking for. So here we are in Terra Bay. Terra Bay is the neighborhood that we consider the most expensive because we have consistently the newest homes. Right in the middle is gonna be the Terra Bay Gymnasium and Rec Center. All the way to the west side of the neighborhood, you'll find Mills Montessori School and the Terra Bay Baseball Fields. Next to the Terra Bay Baseball Fields, you'll find the attached homes in this new development. And as you move to the middle where you have Bay Park Circle, Park Grove Drive, Park Ridge Circle and Sky Park Circle, these are mostly detached homes that share driveways. And if you strictly want a detached home and the largest layouts in this neighborhood, you're gonna be all the way on the Eastern side. Now let's talk about the most walkable neighborhood in South San Francisco. That's Sunshine Gardens. Sunshine Gardens is located in the Northern middle of the city. Bordering the neighborhood to the South, you'll find all your local needs. Next door, you can walk to Trader Joe's, Costco, Kaiser Permanente Hospital, Safeway, the BART station is right next door, and banking centers such as Chase, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America, all within walking distance. It is also one neighborhood away to the west of downtown South City, where you can find the most popular restaurants in town. Here we are in Sunshine Gardens. Sunshine Gardens is the most walkable neighborhood because you're right next to the big hospital, Kaiser Permanente. On the other corner towards the Southwest, you'll be at the BART station. And next to the BART station is a local Starbucks, Trader Joe's, Costco. Pretty much you'll do all your shopping here, especially for your weekly needs. Also found in Sunshine Gardens is a very big park, which is part of the Sunshine Gardens Elementary School. And also one of the two high schools in South San Francisco, the El Camino High School. You might wanna check, depending on your location, which high school your kids would go to, whether it be El Camino High, and there's also South San Francisco High off of El Camino Real. Let's move on to the most popular condo complex in South San Francisco. That's South City Lights. This is a well-managed condo complex that offers a gym, playground, clubhouse, and a proximity to Westboro Square with multiple restaurants, including Paris Spaghetti, Phil's Coffee, Bonchon Chicken, and your local Pacific Super plus Walgreens. You'll be able to find one, two, and three bedroom layouts in this condo complex. And if you're lucky, you might find one that faces the city where you'll see a panoramic view of the hill. Here we are in South City Lights, which is off of Gellert Boulevard and Westboro Boulevard. In Westboro Square, you're gonna find some restaurants from Phil's Coffee for Coffee, a local pho shop, Five Guys, Bonchon Chicken, Paris Spaghetti, Subway, and others. And you're gonna find Pacific Supermarket, Walgreens for your shopping needs. Now let's talk about the best views in South San Francisco. Westboro for the best bay views and possibly parts of the airport where you'll want to find a home. Westboro is made up of a north and a southern side. The north side is mostly comprised of attached homes with an affordable cost per square footage. And on the south side, you'll mostly find detached homes, which are mostly two stories, and sometimes you will find single story homes there too. Secondly, you'll find South City Lights Condo Complex, which we had mentioned previously. It offers amazing bay views, unobstructed. Lastly, Burry Burry next to Ginapero Sierra Boulevard. These homes in Burry Burry tend to have larger lots, and as you get closer to the top near Junipero Sierra Boulevard, you may find yourself with a home with spectacular city light views as well. Here we are in Westboro. Westboro consists of two neighborhoods in northern part and the southern part. Now, both parts of the Westboro neighborhoods, you'll be able to find houses with amazing views as you look towards the east. Depending on where you're located, maybe it's a second floor only, but some homes you'll be able to have views all together. It is right above where we had seen South City Lights, and of course, you're gonna get very similar views if you're in South City Lights as well. Some notable neighborhoods we may have missed covering are Brentwood, Avalon, and Southwood. This is a pocket on the western side of El Camino and the most southern part of town bordering San Bruno. 
These neighborhoods are strictly residential and tends to be the sunniest part of town, especially on the west side, which is where people want to be. Southwood, Avalon, and also Brentwood. This is on the western side of El Camino, but it's right below 280. For the most part, this is the sunniest part of South San Francisco on the west side of El Camino. The local library is in Southwood, which is to the north. And of course, right behind here, you see it is green space. This is a California golf club of San Francisco. There's also many playgrounds within these neighborhoods, which will be access points in case you have pets or you have kids. Thank you guys again for watching another video on what it's like living here in San Mateo County. This one specifically about South San Francisco. We'd love to hear your feedback. Do you agree, disagree? Which neighborhood are you from if you live here? And what comments and feedback can you add so that new viewers or people moving to our area can also learn about it? Stay tuned for the next one.